Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville was called out over his harmful blockade of military promotions by a fellow Republican senator. And you're not going to believe this. Lindsey Graham. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is not someone I have respect for. His flip-flopping on Donald Trump, dishonesty on so many different subjects, and just all-around lack of a spine are aggravating characteristics. But in this rare moment, he said something absolutely true, shockingly, right to the face of fellow Republican Senator from Alabama, Tommy Tuberville. Now, before watching this clip, I'll give you the context on what's going on here. So Tommy Tuberville, as I'm sure you've heard, is holding up over 300 military promotions, meaning people can't assume roles that they should be in. And he's doing this as a protest of the Department of Defense's policy on abortion, where they're trying to make sure that service members in certain states with strict abortion laws aren't punished for being in that state compared to their blue state counterparts when seeking an abortion. Everyone in the military should have access to the same health care. And thus that necessitates giving time off and covering travel expenses for those individuals. Brigadier General Pat Ryder, who is a Pentagon spokesperson, explained it this way after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, quote, the practical effect of the recent changes is that service members may be forced to travel greater distances, take more time off and pay more out of pocket expenses to access reproductive health care, all of which have readiness, recruiting and retention implications for America's armed forces. So Tommy Tuberville is using his power in a pretty unprecedented manner to say, I'm going to hinder the entire military by blocking these promotions until you reverse that policy. And this, by the way, has been a process that for decades has been done with essentially no controversy until Tommy Tuberville. With that being said, here is a pretty fed up Lindsey Graham rightfully going after Tommy Tuberville over this stunt. The Pentagon has issued a legal opinion I disagree with saying this doesn't violate the Hyde Amendment. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. All of us are ready to promote her because she deserves to be promoted. She had nothing to do with this policy. Let me say it again. Everybody in this body could find an issue with any administration they don't agree with. And what we're going to do is open up Pandora's box. Today is abortion policy. If we take back the White House, we'll go back to the Mexico City policy, limiting dollars to be given to overseas entities that are engaged in the abortion business. Some pro-choice people don't like that. What would happen if they put a hold on all the officers because they don't agree with the Republican administration? There's a reason this, is, this has not been done this way for a couple hundred years. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Turbeville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Folks, if this keeps going, people are going to leave. Let me tell you how the system works. You have 18 months, I think, from the time you're promoted to pin on. And if you don't make that gate, your time and grade up or out rule kicks in. There's some people that are waiting to be promoted that if they don't get promoted soon, they're going to be out of the military. Now, how does that help anybody if they're qualified? There's not one senator in here that could not find a reason to object to an administration policy. I mean, I rarely say this, but Lindsey Graham is exactly right there. If every time a senator disagreed on one of the policies of the Department of Defense, they blocked military promotions until it was changed, we'd have mayhem. It's super irresponsible, hindering our military in a time when that's really harmful. People's lives are being impacted in extremely negative ways. Service members' families, for example, are in limbo. Complete disaster. And let me give you an example of the impact of this on leaders in our military. General Eric Smith is the Commandant of the Marine Corps. And he was working as the Commandant and the Assistant Commandant. So number one and number two of the Marine Corps because of Tuba Rill's hold, which is so much to do. And by the way, recently he had a heart attack. Luckily he survived. We don't know if the stress of working two jobs contributed, but as people are saying, it couldn't have helped. Here's more on this from CNN. Smith himself telling the Marine Corps Times last month, quote, it is not 
a sustainable thing when the last thing you do is flip your computer off at 11.30 at night and you're getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. General Smith is now receiving care, according to the Marine Corps, as they scramble to fill the void. Because as I mentioned, Smith does not have a confirmed deputy. The Senate hasn't confirmed an assistant commandant of the Marine Corps, hat tip Tommy Tuberville. The senior most general at Marine Corps HQ, Lieutenant General Karsten Heckel is now filling in for Smith. And Heckel was already doing two jobs because yet again, Tommy Tuberville's holds according to military.com. So now General Heckel's responsible for what, four jobs? The whole affair actually so confusing that the Marine Corps announced that Heckel would be acting commandant and then had to correct itself and say that Heckel would just be performing the duties of the commandant. So even though now he didn't have an assistant commandant to take over his position after this heart attack. So a different military leader had to jump in and there's a scramble going on. Still, Tuberville won't budge. There was a New Republic headline that said, you thought a heart attack might make Tommy Tuberville drop holds? Think again. And that's unfortunately exactly correct. He's punishing people who have no power over this DOD policy. And so doing harming our military readiness and he proclaims to be pro-military. Yeah, right, Tommy. Now, by the way, it isn't just Lindsey Graham among Republicans who is fed up. Here is Republican Senator Dan Sullivan also calling out Tommy Tuberville to his face. And the idea that some of these officers are supposedly woke or desk jockeys, it's ridiculous. These are some of the most combat experienced generals and admirals we've ever had in our country. Finally, Mr. President, these holds also they also pose strategic risk to our force. What does that mean? We are starting to see military officers saying, admirals and generals, I'm getting out. Or they have to get out if they're going to be timed out. I don't know what took Republicans so long to go this hard against Tommy Tuberville, but happy to see it now. Uh, to circle back to the policy at issue here, Tommy Tuberville saying it's unacceptable for the DOD to do what it's doing. A reporter asked the National Security Council's John Kirby the question of, if you really want to get these military promotions moving forward, why not revoke the DOD's policy on abortion? And John Kirby had the perfect response. Take a look at this. National security is truly at risk, as the administration says. Then isn't keeping that abortion policy in place, in effect, a superseding national uh, security? How? I'm not sure I understand. You want to get the, the, the nominations through, right? You take back the policy. Oh, so you, so the suggestion is that we should just turn our backs. No, I get it. I didn't say it was yours. But the suggestion is we should just turn our backs on one in five of every, every person in the United States military, let alone their family members, just so we can get these, these officers confirmed. That's the suggestion that I think you're elucidating. Um, and that just would be an egregious violation of the covenant that we make, the military makes, with the people that sign up and volunteer. Remember this, they're volunteers. There's not conscription, there's no draft. People volunteer for this. And when they volunteer for that duty, they have every right to expect that they're gonna get the health care they need. And let me tell you something else, a healthy force is a ready force. So don't talk to me about national security being impaired. Uh, uh, the one impairing national security is Senator Tuberville, not only because he's depriving the military of necessary leadership in the field and at sea, but he's also willing to deprive female members of the military, 20% of the force, from necessary health care. That both is a violation of national security. And John Kirby is exactly right there, perfectly said. So our national security is being harmed. Individual people's lives are being harmed. And meanwhile, Tupperville is out degrading our military in more ways than one. Yes, with his actions, as we're talking about here, and also his words. Here is him saying our military is headed downhill because it's too woke. Secretary Del Toro of the Navy, he needs to get to building ships. He needs to get to recruiting, and he needs to get wokeness out of our Navy. We've got people doing poems on aircraft carriers over the loudspeaker. Uh, it, it is absolutely insane of the direction that we're headed in our military, and we're headed downhill, not uphill. The only reason our military would be headed downhill is because of your absurd actions, Tommy Tuberville. And I can't get over that his best example of our military being too woke is poems are being read on the loudspeaker on ships, the horror. I know this next point is so obvious, but 
I still have to point it out, Republicans used to obsess over trying to exclusively brand themselves as for the military and the Democrats aren't, they hate the military. Can you imagine if a Democrat degraded military members as much as Tommy Tuberville does? You're too weak because you're woke, essentially what he's saying. And while degrading those who serve, imagine Democrat was doing that and then blocking military promotions. Fox News would call it the greatest defense to the military in American history. It would be all they're talking about. Not so much with Tommy Tuberville. And I'm hoping that now that there's more anger from Republicans, clearly they'll pressure him to change his actions. We'll see if that's successful. I want to show you a clip, though, that I've shown a few times because it's just so good. Mark Milley says it's so much better than I could. And it's on the subject of this, the military's too woke talking point. In a hearing a couple of years ago, he was getting accused of that. You're too woke and the military is suffering because of it. And this highly respected, got to the highest imaginable place as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, served for 40 plus years in the military, loyally to our country. And essentially what he says is, hell yeah, I'm woke. Um, first of all, on the issue of critical race theory, et cetera, I'll, I'll obviously have to get much smarter on whatever the theory is. Um, but I do think it's important, actually, uh, for those of us in uniform to be open-minded and be widely read. And the United States Military Academy is a university. Uh, and it is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage, and I'm white, and I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. It's important that we understand that, because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders, now and in the future, do understand it. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That was started at Harvard Law School years ago, and it proposed that there were laws in the United States, antebellum laws prior to the Civil War, that led to uh, a power differential with African Americans that were three quarters of a human being when this country was formed. And then we had a civil war and emancipation proclamation to change it. And we brought it up to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. It took another 100 years to change that. So look it, I do want to know. And I respect your service, and you and I are both Green Berets. But I want to know. And it matters to our military and the discipline and cohesion of this military. And I thank you for the opportunity to make a comment on that. You got to love it. You really do. So Mark Milley, other military leaders, and the entire military should get the respect of Tupperville, not the despicable behavior they're currently receiving from him. Before you go, don't forget to become a member at LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership where you get a daily bonus show Monday through Friday. Isn't that just spectacular? Plus, follow me on threads at LukeBeasleyOfficial, Instagram at LukeBeasleyOfficial, Twitter or X at LukePBeasley, and sign up for the Beasley Brief, a free morning newsletter summarizing the previous day's events by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash brief, and I'll talk to you next time.